Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Monday's Alaska weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, uh, we've got uh, on the Heather's weather graphic here on the north side of the Alaska Range of the North Slopes. There, that's a dense smoke advisory, which is out uh, for tonight for dense smoke, <laughs> obviously. Uh, reducing visibilities to a half mile at times and uh, due to the light wind conditions and it should build up overnight and then dissipate out again tomorrow kind of the same thing that went on today otherwise uh, out here in the Bering Sea we still have that high surf advisory out but that's due to end in about three hours at 6 p.m. Monday evening here for St. Lawrence Island sort of the south coast and the Bering Strait coast and uh, winds are a lot lighter than they have been there, so it's going to be about to expire, or it will expire at 6 p.m. And uh, so the threat of beach erosion due to the high surf well, is, is over for at least the moment. And for the uh, fire danger chart here, we've got uh, high to very high fire danger, no extreme on here. Uh, up over the upper Yukon Valley again, uh, that's where it's uh, the most widespread is up in that area. Of course, we lost it out here with the moisture and the cooler uh, conditions that moved in, higher humidities, lower temperatures, and uh, kind of a spot here over toward North Wayne and Toke, and that's about it in the uh, 40 mile country, upper Tanah Valley, mostly this area here near the uh, Yukon Porcupine Rivers and over the Yukon Flats up to south side of the Brooks Range. And then also uh, high to very high fire danger continues to sit in the valley into the Madnuska Valley on down in across uh, one to uh, the western Kenai Peninsula areas and then also in the Copper River Basin there uh, through the valley and then up to the north a little bit. And looking at satellite imagery today, uh, it was partly mostly sunny here over the eastern interior. There are a lot more clouds back here to the west. And then the areas of smoke in the central interior uh, kind of dissipates out this afternoon a little bit. And then we've got some moisture and convection over here in Canada associated with a easterly moving wave disturbance. And thunderstorms are breaking out there and heading right eastward there. So could see some thunderstorm activity here in the next few hours or this, early, this evening, get into the maybe the northern panhandle area. Another system down here for the most part is staying down in that area, but uh, may pull some more moisture out of Canada and bring it in uh, later on tonight or, or on to tomorrow. Otherwise, a mostly sunny day here and warm temperatures over uh, south central Alaska, Copper River Basin, Kodiak Island, not too bad over the pan now temperature wise as well. And uh, uh, into the lower 80s, not only in the Copper River Basin and the Kenai Peninsula, also in the upper Tanah Valley, all the way up to the upper Yukon Valley. So, fire danger is probably going to uh, increase and expand up there over the next uh, couple of days as temperatures move into the uh, lower to mid 80s up in that area. Otherwise, uh, we've got a system, a couple of them out here. One just south of the Alaska Peninsula, that's, uh, or I'm sorry, south of the Eastern Aleutians, and, and the Alaska Peninsula. It's gonna be heading eastward and then take aim at the uh, southeast coast for Wednesday night. And then this one out here has been blocked by high pressure over the interior. And this front pushing eastward here, uh, really washing out now down not even any precipitation with it across the Permalos and down to the eastern or into the central Aleutian areas. This portion is really weak. But there is some moisture probably just hit uh, didn't hit the uh, stations there. Probably some areas of light rain and clouds expanding up. It gets a little more widespread in this portion in uh, closer to the uh, low center where it has a little bit better dynamics. That's actually another one in the form, the one earlier one moving up northward across the uh, Russian Far East. Still enough of a gradient, uh, although winds are coming down this afternoon, winds were a lot lighter here in the western areas in the Bering Sea than they were yesterday, but Cape Lisbon, 
Still reporting gusts 60 miles an hour earlier today. That's come down now. Now I think they're only gusting to about 40 miles an hour. That's kind of a standout everywhere else, a lot lighter. Eastern Arctic coast, light winds, interior light winds. And you can see most of the clearing over the central and eastern part of the state, right on down uh, Cook Inlet into Kodiak Island, mostly sunny. Gulf of Alaska, pretty good. Some uh, developing clouds and a little bit of convection here. This one actually hasn't happened yet, but this convection expanding westward probably will this evening into the uh, Wrangell Mountains, possibly the eastern Alaska range, the Besna maybe, and some isolated showers popping up. Kenai Peninsula, Chugach Mountains, North Gulf Coast, nothing really significant. And then the smoke in the interior, isolated showers, mostly just clouds through here, and the rain in a narrow band back west of St. Lawrence Island. That will probably move in there tonight, and we'll see this system also begins to slip eastward, not too rapidly, at least by tonight. We still have the frontal boundary out here. Areas of light rain, fog, and drizzle, winds, real, no, obviously not much of a fact, no factor at all. Uh, just two isobars on that thing uh, into the Bering Sea there. A little bit more of a gradient along and south of the Aleutians developing. So we're going to see the winds actually with the tightening gradient pick up a little over the western and central Aleutians. Otherwise, here's that trough moving eastward, thunderstorms uh, in this area tonight or by tomorrow, and then also a chance on the eastern border of the Panhandle. Otherwise, variable clouds, isolated showers may be there on the south coast, and possibly uh, showers or fog, drizzle, lower conditions there on the eastern Arctic coast. That's just a possibility. Otherwise, it's going to stay pretty good up there right along the coastline and into the interior. Fair, some clouds here, Cook Inlet along the Alaska Range, and then for tomorrow, so you have a weak system here right off the southeast coast and got a pretty good chance of thunderstorms. It's uh, pretty unstable, so there's, uh, don't be surprised if you uh, hear some thunder, see some lightning here along the, uh, mostly over the coastal areas, and it'll be a little more stable over toward the border there. And then thunderstorms also with this wave coming eastward, look for more clouds and uh, showers here, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, thunderstorms, best chance, uh, Talkeetna's. Maybe the Chugach, back to the northeast there into the uh, 40 mile country and eastern Alaska range and also along the western Alaska range. Otherwise still areas of smoke dissipating out in the afternoon around the Tanah Valley. Mostly sunny, warm temperatures into the 80s up there over the uh, upper Tanah Valley area and uh, some yeah mid 80s there into the upper Yukon Valley with nice conditions all the way out to the Arctic coast. May catch a few clouds right along the coastline. You may catch a few showers here over the northwest coast, Kivalina, maybe no attack, and Seward Peninsula, but just pretty isolated and partly sunny again. Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, dry, partly to mostly sunny. And this front holding steady out here, this again, real light precipitation with it and winds, not much of a problem. Kind of an increase in the winds, as I mentioned out here, uh, long and south of the Aleutians, uh, but nothing, I think, probably staying under gale force. And areas of light rain will probably slip on up into St. Lawrence Island tomorrow. It'll be kind of a cloudy, drizzly, foggy day there down to the Pribilofs as well. And these showers will stay off the Arctic coast. Going ahead to Wednesday, we'll see this system we've been track that's been tracking slowly eastward. It takes a jog up to the north here, and another one develops just south of it there. And that's going to spread a chance of rain maybe to the extreme south coast of the Panhandle, possibly Wednesday afternoon. Otherwise, it'll be a Cloudy day with uh, showers across uh, the entire stretch of the uh, panhandle there, right up into the eastern North Gulf Coast with this trough. And thunderstorm chances again uh, becoming mostly cloudy in the afternoon here over much of interior Alaska. In fact, this area up here over the northwest, that could see some uh, moderate amounts of precipitation and thunderstorms up and through here. The uh, uh, Ambler area, Kobuk Valley on out the Selwick Valley, even some showers into Kotzebue Sound, down to the Nolato Hills, chance of thunderstorms. And actually, thunderstorm chances all the way down across the northern Cusquam Valley to the western Alaska Range. And less of that here over the eastern interior, a little bit more sunshine there, and partly and mostly sunny, north slope in the Arctic coast. And this front gets its act together a little bit and pushes some moisture in to the southwest coast. It'll be pretty light and intermittent, nothing heavy. But uh, definitely more clouds and a chance of precipitation. Yukon Delta, uh, Kuskokwim Bay, Nunavak Island, right on down to the Alaska Peninsula. But again, even this weak warm front, that's going to be very light precipitation. Just look for lower flying conditions. And then that front draped right along the Aleutians uh, looks good for 
clouds with uh, occasional light rain, fog, and drizzle. And also up here over the eastern uh, Arctic coast, looks like the gradient tightens up a little bit up there. So you could see a little bit of an increase in the winds, maybe to small craft advisory levels on the east side there, but staying light back to the west and looks continued dry, mostly sunny. Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, up into the uh, deltas and lower Yukon Cuscom River Valley areas. Looking at the low temperatures for tonight, mid to upper 50s or upper 50s, 55 to 60 eastern interior, all the way back to the, uh, looks like, uh, unilocally low 57, upper 40s near 50 on the Arctic coast, mid to upper 50s here for southern Alaska, lower 50s Alaska Peninsula, and mid 50s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow in the 60s here for the southeast coast. Uh, cooler with the clouds and showers coming in for the Susitna Valley, just uh, upper 60s to lower 70s, mid 70s again for the Tana Valley, or for the uh, Copper River Basin, Tana Valley, 80 to 85, 86, some places might even check in with 87 degrees. You can see 80 degree weather extends westward here and then near 70 out toward Unalakleet, lower 70s in the mid Yukon Cuscombe River Valleys and near 60 along the Arctic coast. Lows the following morning, quite mild, 60, lower 60s here from uh, the greater Fairbanks area on up into Fort Yukon, near 60 back to the west, 62 for Kotzebue, and 50s everywhere else, followed by high temperatures on Wednesday. Uh, cooling down, again, continue uh, more clouds and showers, so 65 to 70 maybe for the uh, Susitna Valley and 60s for the Kenai Peninsula lower to mid 60s for the southeast coast and lower 70s now for the Copper River Basin but still uh, upper Yukon Valley, Koyukuk Valley on down toward uh, Eagle into the lower 80s with uh, 70s down to possibly McGrath and Nikolai. Cooler 50s, lower to mid 50s as usual along the southwest coast of Nunavak Island. North Slope could see some 70s as well as the Brooks Range with uh, 55 to 65 along the Arctic coast and the Aleutians will see in the lower to mid 50s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Tuesday morning's uh, flying weather graphic here, the first aviation flying weather graphic, showing VFR here over the interior. Areas of smoke, uh, again, could reduce uh, visibilities, uh, pretty, in some cases pretty significantly, like it uh, has recently up in the interior here. And uh, even still some left there around the Kenai Peninsula. IFR, Bering Sea, south side of the Alaska Peninsula up to southwest Kodiak Island. IFR here, Gulf of Alaska with marginal conditions to the coast and across the southern panhandle, IFR, or IFR eastern Boulevard Sea coast. And then for the afternoon, north slope, uh, western Arctic coast, Kotzebue Sound, all the way down into much of interior Alaska, down to the Alaska Range at least, uh, VFR. South of the mountains, though, Copper River Basin marginal, that extending up uh, across the Talkeetnas and uh, down to the North Gulf Coast, a couple of spots of IFR there. Marginal VFR in the Panhandle, IFR in the Bering Sea with marginal conditions right along the southwest and west coast. For the Wednesday morning outlook, uh, IFR encroaches a little farther to the east here, actually probably getting up into Cape Newenham uh, and a little bit into Kuskokwim Bay, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, and then all the way back out to the west, IFR. Still pretty good VFR, western interior and north of the Alaska Range VFR right up to the Arctic coast and beyond, but uh, about a lick talk uh, to maybe Wainwright, IFR possibly, and IFR really taking over the southeast coast for Wednesday morning, but by the afternoon, marginal VFR there, IFR here up along the north Gulf Coast and the uh, coast range down along the south side of the Kenai Peninsula, but east of Kodiak. And Marshall VFR getting a little more into the south southern interior here, actually pushing up toward uh, uh, Tanana, or, little, or Galena actually, with uh, VFR to the north and east, uh, central eastern Arctic coast in the VFR zone. IFR, not quite as extensive, but still quite an area out there over the Bering Sea. Into the Aleutians, uh, looks like on Alaska Island though, being a VF, marginal VFR as well as the Alaska Peninsula passes. Anatovic, possibly marginal at times early on, otherwise VFR. And Adigan, just go VFR for that pass. And Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, VFR with uh, risk of a thunderstorm later on in the afternoon, same forecast for rainy. Uh, VFR, risk of a thunderstorm, windy, same forecast, good VFR conditions, uh, hopefully. Uh, and Isabel, VFR. Mintasta, VFR becoming marginal as uh, convection and moisture builds into the area 
And for Tanita, that same pattern as well, possibly going marginal VFR with increasing chances of thunderstorms in the afternoon and the evening. Portage VFR trending toward marginal probably by midday and Chilkoot and White VFR becoming marginal. Freezing levels, uh, 8 to 10,000 here across the southeast coast. A uh, small pocket of 12,000 foot freezing levels, <laughs> freezing levels right there uh, underneath that upper level ridge and then 10,000 feet, a little bit cooler air now with that storm out there, 6,000 feet over the northwest bearing, and then all the way back up to 12,000 feet over the eastern Aleutians. And taking a look at icing along that uh, boundary I just spoke of, an area of moisture that's gradually falling apart and weakening, but uh, probably enough there for uh, areas of light to very isolated, considerable moderate rime icing, above 10,000 feet here in the Aleutians area, about 7,000 cooler air aloft there, uh, comparatively for St. Lawrence Island, and then mixed icing here sliding westward. Here's a, for one batch here with a, a disturbance uh, with the convection as well uh, in Copper River Basin, Kenai Peninsula area, and pushing down Turnigan Arm, and another one there over the northern panhandle. Jet stream uh, easterly flow here with a high up over the eastern interior, low over the, uh, or just southwest of the, uh, or west southwest of the Queen Charlotte's. 50 knot easterly jet, that's pulling those uh, disturbances westward here. Otherwise, high pressure protecting the remainder of the state. Southerly, still 50 to 70 knots there over the eastern Bering Sea, right through the Bering Strait. And looking at 9,000 feet, we've got uh, westerlies up to 40 knots for the western Aleutians, 35 to 40 into the central areas, then really diminishing here. And just uh, northeast 15 for the Alaska Peninsula, light for Bristol Bay, light eastern interior areas, uh, 30 to 40 knots bearing St. Strait to the northwest coast and 20 to 30 knot winds with a system here off the southern panhandle. Otherwise, uh, go back to 3,000, 20 to 30 knots kind of coming in, 20 knots over towards Stewart. Otherwise, 10 knot winds. Here's that disturbance working westward there with uh, winds not much of a factor. 3,000 feet, about the same thing, but the winds lighter turbulence wise. I uh, like to isolate a moderate chop here in the Bering Strait in the Western Aleutians. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and we have a special guest in the studio today. We welcome Amanda Turborg of the Aviation Weather Center. Thanks for joining us, Amanda. Yeah, thank you for having me. Amanda's flown in all the way from Kansas City, and uh, for those of you that don't know, the Aviation Weather Center serves the lower 48 uh, for aviators, just as the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit here in Anchorage serves all of Alaska. So I kind of wonder, what's the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City doing to help out Alaska, Amanda? Yeah, you know, we do a lot of collaboration work with our sister station up here. Uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of work, especially in the satellite meteorology. Okay. Um, in particular, we have been looking at ways to identify, better identify icing conditions in clouds, oh. um, which is a big deal up here because Very. as I've come to find out, even though I'm not from here, um, you guys have a lot of pilots here. We have a lot of pilots. In yeah. fact, it's, when you say you can't get there from here, that's how you get there. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so uh, with icing potential then, uh, what, what's Kansas City working on? Uh, well, we are working on something that will help us, again, identify the icing in the clouds. Um, mm -hmm. You don't want ice on your aircraft. No. Uh, not only does it add a whole bunch of extra weight to your airframe when it, it, it attaches to mm -hmm. the wings and the nose cone, but it can also mess with your aerodynamics. Right. Um, and in the most serious conditions, that can mess with it enough that you can actually crash. It changes the shape of the wing and that makes it sometimes impossible to fly, right? It does, yeah. So mm -hmm. we want to figure out a way to forecast, better forecast for that. Makes sense. Now this particular image is over Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, the colors here are a little goofy. It doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill satellite image. Okay. Um, but the red is where you have liquid clouds and the blue is ice. But again, it really doesn't tell you a lot where you have icing conditions mm -hmm. in that cloud. Uh, because in those clouds, there's little droplets and they're cold and they're actually below freezing, but they're still liquid. And wow. that makes them sticky. Okay. So when an aircraft flies through there, um, those droplets are sticking to the aircraft and it can mm -hmm. happen amazingly fast. Right. And so that's what we're trying to find. Um, and there is a product called the Aircraft Flight Icing Threat that mm -hmm. does this. Um, and it's basically looking at the temperature of the cloud, mm -hmm. and it's also looking at the size of the droplets to okay. identify a probability and intensity of those icing conditions. Okay. Um, and if you flip to the next image, mm -hmm. um, this is a case from Juneau, Alaska, um, where this probably wouldn't have been the most, the best day to fly around Juneau. Okay. Um, now there was an area of moisture that pushed south 
from the southwest mm -hmm. up along the coast that pushed in a stratus layer. And in the stratus layer, there was a lot of those super cool liquid drops or a lot of stickiness. Okay. Um, and so the flight icing threat was able to, in the pinks and the reds there, was mm -hmm. able to identify where that icing was. Um, now this is really cool, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to identify that sure. there is, you know, of course, caveats to every product. Um, much as we wish it would, it would happen, sun doesn't shine all the time, unless, I guess, if you live in northern Alaska during the summertime. Right, right. Um, but we need that sun to be able to bounce off those clouds and to be able to see where those super cool drops are. Okay, so it's a daytime only tool. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right now, of mm -hmm. course, you know, we're in the era, era of advanced satellite technology, and there right. is a satellite that can actually use moonlight to see clouds. Yes. And so sometime in the future, we hope to be able to do that. Okay. Um, another thing that is a bit of a challenge is multiple layers of clouds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only see so far through a thick cloud. Okay. And if it's thick enough, sometimes you can't see a layer of icing that's below there. Right, right. Um, but even besides those caveats, it does, this product has a lot of potential to help out Alaskan aviators here. Well, it sounds like a really big deal and, and something that uh, forecasters at the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit could use probably on a daily basis and especially in the middle of a really big storm. Yeah, I would think so. Do you have a really good success story in the lower 48 using this tool? Um, you know, this is a, it's a fairly new product and so we're still evaluating it, but yeah, we've had a, a lot of cases um, where we have seen that it does, it does tend to capture those icing conditions. Okay, very good. Well, Amanda, thanks so much for sharing some of the very interesting satellite imagery and the tools that you're using there at the Aviation Weather Center in Kansas City with us here in Alaska. Uh, people can probably find some of this information online, right? Yeah, um, here is a website here. It's a page from NASA Langley, and they have mm -hmm. this imagery as well as a bunch of other satellite imagery that you can take a look at. Okay, great. And I'm sure our friends at the Alaska Aviation Weather Center and the unit will be uh, using that in the, in the coming months there uh, with your training and your help there to learn more about uh, that tool to help Alaska aviators any day of the year. That's wonderful stuff. So thanks again for joining us, Amanda, and uh, we welcome you to uh, view any of our Alaska weather facts on YouTube anytime at the address below, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, really not di much, di no different uh, for what you can see on this scale from yesterday, unless you overlaid them, but uh, just kind of uh, a slow drift to the north of those uh, winds and off to the northeast here. And uh, it's, that's going to expect it to continue for a few days. This area here, it looks like it's shrinking, but it's grounded there on the north side of the barrier islands and not expected to move much. Coastal water forecast, southeast 15, south coast of the Pandanel Seas uh, running 4 feet and east 10 on the north coast, swinging around up there south of Yakutat, west 15, south 15 Lynn Canal, south 15 Stevens Passage, south 15 Clarence Strait, seas in all three areas there, 3 feet. Outlook for Wednesday, southeast 15 for Clarence Strait and northern Lynn Canal, L lighter 10 knot winds there for Stevens Passage. South 20 knots here on the south coast, uh, kind of responding to that system approaching. And then southeast 15, four to five foot seas on the north coast. And for Cook Inlet tomorrow, north of the Forelands, light subtleties at 10 knots. Uh, southern Cook Inlet, south 15, three foot seas. Southeast 15 there for the uh, Kamishak Bay area. Same thing, or um, southwest at 15 for Kamishak Bay. Southwest for the Barren Islands, southwest 15, north Gulf Coast. All three zones there, three foot seas, and stays light, winds stay light there for the eastern north Gulf Coast, south at 10, and the seas uh, pretty slight for that area, three feet, southwest 10 for Prince William Sound. East at 10 for Prince William Sound on Wednesday, south winds at 10 knots, light wind conditions continue for the uh, north Gulf Coast here, 10 knot winds, seas at two feet, and south at 10 with two foot seas for the Barren Islands, southeast 20 knots for Kamishak Bay, south 20 for Southern Cook Inlet and South 15 here north of the Forelands with four foot seas. For the Bering Sea side of the peninsula tomorrow, we've got uh, south winds at 10 knots, three foot seas, light southeast winds for Bristol Bay as well. Uh, Pacific side, though, a different story from uh, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape. East winds 20 knots, seven foot seas, 15 knot winds on up towards Sitkanak out of the east, but turn around to the southwest, up the east side of Kodiak Island at 15 and southwest 20 for Shillikoff Strait. And then for uh, Wednesday, southwest 20 knots here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, otherwise staying light in Bristol Bay, southerlies at 10, southwest 10 here 
for uh, the area southwest of Sitka and Ak Kodiak Island, uh, kind of a variable 10 to 15 knot wind pattern there with a southerly component, southeast 15, Pacific side of the peninsula. For the Western Aleutian Small Craft Advisories tomorrow, west to southwest winds, 25 knots from Chimianatu all the way over to uh, Amchitka. For Adak and Atka, southwest uh, 15 or west-southwest, 15 to 20 knots with five to seven foot seas. Fox Islands, uh, Unmak Island, west-southwest 15. On Alaska Island, northeast, 10 to 20, seas three to seven feet. And uh, those all getting kind of in line there on Wednesday with small craft advisories here approaching the Unamak Island area at 25 knots from the west southwest, southwest 20 for Alaska Island, sea six feet, and west 25 for Adak and Atka. Small craft advisories there will extend back to Amchitka and then west 20 knots on out to Shimia. Southwest coast, uh, south of Nunavak Island, southeast at 15. Otherwise, southerly winds for the Pribilof, St. Matthew Island, Yukon Delta Coast right up to St. Lawrence Island at 15 knots with four to five foot seas. And we'll bring it up to 20 knots here for St. Lawrence Island out of the south on Wednesday. Also, the uh, area south of Nunavak Island, southerly is at 20 knots, southeast 15, Yukon Delta Coast, St. Matthew Island, southwest at 10 and southwest 15 for the Pribilofs. Arctic Coast, east side, east 20 knots, central coast, southeast 20, west side, east 15. Cape over to Cape Thompson, southeast 20, and then Cape Thompson to Wales, southeast at 15. And then for Wednesday, 10 knot winds from Wales up to Cape Beaufort from the east, southeast, east 15, the western coast, 20 knot winds on the central coast, and then as expected, these winds, uh, small craft advisories here for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east 25 knots. For tonight, again, fair over the interior, some thunderstorms uh, beginning to build here and work into the uh, Wrangell Mountains and eastern Copper River Basin. And that will uh, grow tomorrow as an actual, actual wave comes westward here. So cloudier, cooler, a little cooler, and better chance of uh, convection here anywhere south central Alaska up into the uh, eastern Tanana Valley area. Panhandle as well. Could see some along the coast. And for the next day, a little bit of light rain spreads into the west and cooler over the interior of the state with afternoon thunderstorms. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.